Center for Transportation webinars. My name is Brianne Eby. I'm a senior policy analyst here at ENO. Today we are presenting Making the Grade MDOT MTA's Core Bus Performance Monitoring Program. Following the 2017 launch of Baltimore Link, a complete network redesign of the Maryland Department of Transportation, Maryland Transit Administration core bus system, uh, the MDOT MTA Office of Service Development worked alongside consultants at Foursquare, um, integrated transportation planning to develop a robust route level performance monitoring program. In this uh, webinar featuring Thomas Hewitt, Director of Service Development for MDOT MTA and Jeremy Strauss, Senior Transportation Planner at Foursquare, uh, we'll focus on virtually all aspects of the performance monitoring program from conceptual development uh, to the four service pillars to meaningful application, presentation, and usage of ongoing results. It will address uh, this, the program's route grading system visualized via report cards as well as an <coughs> online dashboard system that allows for easy analysis of trends over any time frame. Finally, the webinar will touch on successful service changes uh, MDOT MTA has implemented directly after pinpointing issues through performance monitoring. Learn about how MDOT MTA service planners use this powerful program to review route reports, grades, and trends, drilling down to minute routes, minute route de uh, details at the click of a button. After the presentation, we will have plenty of time for questions. For those listening in, you are encouraged to submit questions and comments through the questions function on the webinar website. You don't have to wait until the speakers are done to submit questions. You can do this at any time. Thanks again for joining us today. And with that, take it away, Thomas and Jeremy. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is Tom Hewitt from MTA. This is Jeremy Strauss with Foursquare. So let's get right into it. Um, in today's agenda, we want to talk about the program history and the background of how we looked at performance uh, with MDOT MTA. We're going to go then into the current program details, talk about some applications as a result, and then as a result of that, looking at some success stories. So um, Baltimore Link was a, a complete network redesign in 2017, and there was a lot of different elements to it, but with regards to performance monitoring, we had three new service types, our CityLink service, our local link, and our express bus link service. Um, the CityLink service, uh, high frequency, 24 hours a day, um, forming a downtown grid. We have our local link service, which essentially is like a neighborhood connectors and coming from the urban and suburban neighborhoods, and then our express routes, which are typically like that. When we look at the performance, um, it's important to note there are different needs for each of these, um, each of these service types. And when we look at performance monitoring and measuring, um, we can't necessarily be comparing a CityLink route to an express bus link route um, because there's different standards with regards to efficiency and passenger loads between those two types. So we wanna look at our service planning principles and to achieve the goal um, of world-class uh, customer service, safe, efficient, and reliable uh, transit across Maryland, uh, we looked at these five uh, planning principles um, when we're providing service but still really keeping a focus on the safe, efficient, reliable, and world-class customer service aspect. So uh, the background, before the CURT program, it was fairly disjointed, it was piecemeal, and there was really no formal guidelines. Um, the information that we did have was fairly um, inadequate. Our OTP data had some quality issues. Um, information was reported a little differently um, in total hours and miles, for example, rather than revenue hours and miles. Um, and also we did not uh, track things and cover customer service measures or anything like that with regards to service planning. So, um, you know, this graph down below is uh, back in 2012, um, just a basic table that, you know, we were using that had a, a rank order method. Um, but beyond that, comparing, you know, route to route with a rank order, there was really no way we could uh, get into the weeds and looking at things um, such as time of day or direction of travel, things that you really need when you're um, doing a service planning uh, program. So just like the core bus network, our performance monitoring process needed a reboot. So there was a need for guidance documents. Um, so we can create a unified approach to service planning analysis and looking at the system. Um, you know, with, with Baltimore Link, that was a huge undertaking and we really wanted to make sure that we kept on, uh, you know, continuously improving the system. But in order to look at that, we wanted to look at some peers for best practices. How are other agencies uh, doing their uh, performance monitoring? What was their process? And in addition, you know, how are we doing against previous uh, previous system and previous years? 
Um, so it was important to develop these guidance documents and be able to track this over time. This also helped us establish a work plan within the Office of Service Development so that we can have uh, definitive timelines and um, the process uh, so both internal and external stakeholders can be aware of what it takes to do uh, service planning and scheduling for a transit agency. So as a result, um, one of the things we did, we uh, really looked at some of the peers and uh, created an annual service planning calendar. Um, this was you know, prior to Baltimore Link and just after, um, there was a call for additional service modifications, but no real timeline for how to do so beyond the legal framework of having public hearings. So there was a lot of education on the part um, of OSD staff, uh, service development staff, to explain the service planning and scheduling process, uh, the timelines, and what's needed to perform appropriate analysis and turn those changes into a working schedule. So applying the best practices from other agencies, we developed this uh, planning calendar, which details the steps in the process and how each step occurs within the year. Um, and that's important because, you know, it takes, for example, we just had our service change this, uh, this past Sunday, and people in the agency and people outside didn't necessarily realize that, you know, we have to start this process back in September to really analyze the service and, and make decisions on where we're gonna be making changes. Uh, we would be getting requests in December and January of previous years, for example, to make changes to our February pick. So that was one of the things we wanted to point out with our annual service planning calendar is where are the cutoffs and how long it takes to um, you know, make these changes. And as a result, like how do we then measure the performance and really um, efficiently uh, you know, make these performance monitoring changes based on the performance of the routes? So this is Jeremy from Foursquare. Foursquare had worked uh, with, with Office of Service Development before Tom's tenure there and before the, the implementation of Baltimore Link as well. Um, we were a service planning consultant helping to uh, design that network. So we had a good understanding of the system, uh, the changeover there. Um, and bearing that in mind, um, I'll cover now how we developed the performance monitoring program. So the first thing we did was work with MTA to determine uh, performance measures that really reflect the goals um, for safety, efficiency, reliability, and customer service, um, especially related to service planning. We then uh, work to determine performance targets based on a combination of what peer agencies were doing, um, as well as how the previous MTA system was performing, um, sort of taking the approach of here's where we are, how can we meet and exceed that on an ongoing basis. Um, we developed a grading system, much like grades that you would receive in school um, from A through F, and developed a reporting process using that uh, service planning calendar that you just saw on the last slide, um, looking at how can we uh, report data on a monthly by pick and annual basis. Um, and finally, we're able to integrate uh, performance monitoring into uh, the planning process. So this is the current process that we're using. Um, we have a data collection process that happens each month. We get average trip level, um, total monthly uh, ridership data as well as uh, customer service data. Um, we measure that against the targets um, that we've specified. We review at the end of every month, at the end of a pick, and at the end of a year, um, as well as through an online dashboard that, that we'll show you a bit later. Um, we offer the routes grades using the grading system that we've, we've come up with, um, and we uh, analyze the service at a, at a macro and in-depth level as well. Um, and what all this does really, um, the, the real value is in it is that we can bring uh, this information to constituents, be they the general public, stakeholders, uh, other MTA staff, or the administrator even, uh, to back up ideas for service changes or for proposals. So now I'll hand it over to Tom. So we're going to go into just some uh, current program details. Um, so really, when we look at performance measures, as I mentioned, you know, we want to have measures that aligned with our MDOT MTA mission within the context of service planning and scheduling. And I can't stress that enough is um, these are things that are actually within service development's control when it comes to service uh, development and service delivery. You know, all these measures could be analyzed and scored um, at the route level. So when you're looking at safety, um, overcrowding, that is something um, that we can control overcrowding. It's a function of the level of service. Efficiency, we can control the distribution of resources relative to demand and need within scheduling and service planning. Reliability, we control the run times and the schedules, but we can't control things um, such as bus breakdowns or staffing issues that can kind of throw a wrench into the, um, the reliability of the service. And a customer service, you know, we can measure how the riders feel about the service on the routes and really quantify that. Uh, one point I wanted to make, uh, we have the percent breakdown 
of each of these four measures. So safety, efficiency, and reliability all get 30% of a grade, whereas customer service gets 10%. As we were talking and discussing, customer service is gonna impact the other measures. If it's, if it's overcrowded, if it's unreliable, we're gonna hear about it. So we didn't wanna overinflate the customer service aspect, but we did want that to be an important measure that kind of is a, is a barometer for how the rest of the um, service is doing. So I'll drill down a bit deeper in, into each of those measures just briefly. Um, for safety, we do look at the percentage of, of overcrowded trips using average trip level data, um, which is the percentage of trips on which the maximum load that's reported exceeds the uh, maximum load specified, or the maximum load standard, I should say, specified um, for that period and service type. Um, for each of these uh, measures that I'll talk about, we, we normalize on a zero to four scale where four um, is the most favorable outcome. So here uh, between zero and 1% overcrowded trips in a period. And then we use those normalized scores to um, ultimately calculate uh, metric level and overall route grades. So for efficiency, we have three uh, measures, cost per passenger, passengers per revenue hour, and passengers per trip. Um, the targets that you see here that we've developed for, for efficiency are um, rolling, we do update them every year based on performance um, in the previous year um, and sort of a combination of targets that, that we use, some of which are based on previous performance and some, some of which are based on industry or, or industry standards or that sort of thing. Um, and efficiency is interesting because a route could be quote unquote uh, efficient and doing very well in each of these categories and, and very productive, but as a result, not doing so well in overcrowding or um, on-time performance because it has so many passengers. And that's another reason to um, look at all of this holistically. Um, so uh, like uh, safety, the grades for efficiency, um, we do use a normalized zero to four um, scale. We use something called the service efficiency index, um, which normalizes the, uh, the three measures, cost per passenger, passengers per hour, and passengers per trip, um, whereby a uh, service efficiency index greater than one means that it is um, exceeding um, or meeting the target. Uh, less than one uh, going all the way down to zero would mean that um, it is um, not meeting the target. So um, again, on that zero to four scale, which we use for the final grade calculation. Um, reliability here, uh, we look at um, what MTA um, refers to as scheduled performance, which is like on-time performance, um, but more um, closely related to how uh, routes are performing um, with regard to the actual schedule. For schedule performance, um, what that means is essentially we do, we only include completed trips um, rather than uh, special deviations due to construction or, or special events or that sort of thing, um, looking at how routes are performing on time at both the trip level and time point level um, using uh, the standard of 80% as highest. So. 80% on-time performance um, or higher would be a normalized score of four, going all the way down to um, below 65% would be um, a zero. It's graded again on, the, on that zero to four scale. Um, and I should mention again, trip level scheduled performance is based on the final time point of a route. Time point level um, is based on all time points. So by averaging those two scores together, um, we're able to get a very robust look at, at how um, a route is performing related to the schedule. And finally, um, customer service, uh, we look at complaints per 100,000 boardings, which is an industry standard there. We use complaints per 10,000 boardings for the Express Bus Link service. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Express Bus Link boarding, Express Bus Link is um, a more limited express service. Um, overall boardings are much lower than on local routes. So um, the other thing is that Express Bus commuters will have a higher expectation of, of bus performance. Um, and we'll, we'll have lower overall boardings, and lower overall complaints. So we do use um, a slightly more stringent standard there. And um, we have targets, which you see on the, the left side of the slide for each um, service type normalized on a, on a score of zero to four. Um, the other thing we use to calculate the customer service grade is something called Rate Your Ride. MTA um, has an app that allows users to rate their ride on a scale of, of zero to five. Um, anything receiving an average monthly grading of 3.3 or higher would receive a four, um, progressively down to zero. Um, the customer service grade is, is the average grade um, of those two scores, complaints per 100,000 and rate your ride um, zero to four, and then we do normalize that to a grade scale as I'll go over in the next slide. So we calculate grades for each of the four metrics, safety, efficiency, reliability, and customer service. Um, using uh, the rubric that you see here, we use um, an A through F system, including pluses and minuses. 
Um, we do calculate overall grades as well using the, um, the weighting that Tom mentioned earlier, where safety, efficiency, and reliability are each weighted 30%, customer service is weighted um, 10%. So just in sum, we're using those zero to four scores um, to calculate grades at, at several different levels um, using this rubric. And now we'll talk about some of the actual applications of this. So all this data is great. It's been great for MTA uh, in, in, in um, measuring and analyzing our performance, but you know we had multiple needs with this information. We, you know, one, we really wanted to per, uh, have the ability to drill down into routes and examine performance by things such as by trip, by time of day, by service day, by direction of travel. These are all things that, from a scheduling and service planning perspective, you really have to get into the minutia you know, and, and use that scalpel approach to really make improvements that, that make a difference um, you know, within resources that we have. But as well, we also need to, needed to create a clear and easily understandable reports um, so that everyone in the agency can understand, um, you know, grades are easy to understand, but you know, we can look at things by route, by month, and even by service change or pick um, so really be able to uh, track and see the performance of a route. So as a result, uh, you know, we put together uh, what we call a route report card. So these are broken down into easily digestible sections that provide a great level of detail. So everyone from our field supervision to our um, information call center to um, even operators can see um, things such as the service description, how many miles um, in the route and how many stops, major roads, trip generators, connectors. You know, these are all important things to really understand you know, why a route is performing the way it is, where it's traveling and stuff like that. Um, ridership is also a big one. So we wanna see you know, how these routes are ranking just in ridership alone and then service frequency and operating hours. Again, some background stuff um, for the, the route itself. But then on the right-hand side is really when we get into the details of the four measures that we looked at with safety, efficiency, reliability, and customer service. So we can see with the report cards, um, for example, with the local link 77, the number of trips um, or the percent of trips that were overcrowded in the early morning or in the midday or PM peak. Um, we can also look at the efficiency measures and you know, with those sliders, we can see how those routes are performing with the average of that service type. For example, local link in this instance. Um, looking at the reliability uh, and the schedule performance, as Jeremy mentioned, we can then drill down and see where routes slowing down, and we can, you know, work with our partners at City DOT and the County DPW to be able to, you know, make improvements um, outside of, um, you know, what's in control of MTA with the right of way, things like that, and then customer complaints. As we said, you know, we really want to get a uh, you know, have a litmus test for how the service is performing. And the best way to do that is see how many complaints we're getting. And again, as a reminder, these are complaints related to service planning um, related, um, you know, feedback such as late vehicles, uh, no shows, um, you know, even early vehicles and stuff like that. And then we're able to get these grades and these are produced every month um, at the end of every pick and um, at the end of every year. And then also mid pick where we have, we check the status of the of the service change itself so we can see how it was performing with any changes we made. So um, in addition to the report card, uh, kind of like the base level, you know, uh, grading, um, we really needed to uh, drill down into the data. So, um, you know, with the um, assistance from Foursquare, we're able to put together a performance monitoring dashboard. And in this instance, um, the performance monitoring is really just one of the four things we look at when we're kind of checking and making sure um, of our, our information is accurate, but uh, let's go into some of the performance monitoring um, slides. So we use the, uh, the Tableau software to create the dashboard, um, just another way of, of looking at this data to really drill down, as Tom mentioned. So this is an example of safety, which uh, is overcrowding. And see here, we're looking at one route in one direction for one service month, um, and we're able to see uh, which times of the day, uh, the average overcrowding percentage, um, we've set the target here at 1%, um, meaning that 0 to 1% represents a 4. Um, here, trip performance by service type, we have average passengers per trip for CityLink. Uh, this is another way we're able to drill down and, and look at um, passengers per trip or individual trip and start hour. Um, and reliability, you can see the target there is, is 80%, and this is one uh, route for one direction for service month as well. Um, for customer service, you see here we have for all CityLink routes, complaints per 100,000 boardings. And then finally, um, the grade trends, which is one of the cool applications of the dashboard that allows us to um, look at for all the metrics as well as overall grades. 
um, how a route is performing over time, which we'll talk about a bit more in just a moment. Um, you can go to actually all three here. Uh, we've got the backend data, which we're also providing to MTA each month and by pick as well um, to get a more detailed look at, at what's going on for each direction in case there's a, a specific route, time period, direction, for example, that they'd like to drill into. We do provide these spreadsheets um, to MTA periodically so that they can do that. Okay, so I'm just going to go into some success stories and ways we've applied this program, um, the performance monitoring program, the dashboard, into seeing how we're how we're doing um, with our core bus. So some of the success stories, and uh, you know, the analysis of routes post service changes. That's always important for us to look at if we made changes and are they working? Have they worked? And are we improving? Because it's always continuous improvement. We always want to make things better. Um, also, the re relationship between grades, like I, we mentioned previously, uh, customer service grade definitely has a relationship with overcrowding and things like that. And we'll show you some examples of that. And then the impact of externalities on our service. Um, you know, we operate in the public right of way. We work with a lot of different um, constituents and, and um, folk and groups, uh, whether it's businesses um, and stuff like that. So it's important to uh, factor those in when we're looking at great at trend performance. So this is the CityLink line. It's one of our um, high frequency routes, the CityLink uh, service type. So we've seen um, with the CityLink Lime, um, we're, you know, we're seeing the safety measure and the orange line at the top and then the reliability in the, the bluish, the light blue. Um, the vertical dash lines are when we have our service changes. So um, that was something that you know, we can then see how the route is performing with these measures um, you know, after and before a service change. So with this one, you know, when you're looking at, for example, the uh, the reliability of the Lime, so last uh, or September 2018, you know, we had um, a, a score of about um, any, anywhere between a D to a D plus in September and October, um, but we saw some improvement as it was going on. Um, when we compare that to the same time period, September uh, 2019 to November and December 2019, we can see that you know the improvement has gone up. So not only is the the trend going up, but just the overall average has gone up. So, you know, we've seen now between September 19 and October 2019, the reliability has improved from a C to a B. Um, and as of currently uh, in December of 2019, it's at an A minus, which equates to about a 78% a on time performance. Just want to throw in, uh, this is the same, really much the same slide, except the one difference is we threw on the customer service measure. So again, like I was saying with the relationship between customer service, you know, as we saw a dip in, in reliability. So we got, things got better, people got used to it, and then things went south a little bit. Uh, around at the same time, you can also notice the overcrowding started to become a little bit of an issue. So as a result, we did see uh, more customer complaints related to service and we can see that it's a stark uh, you know, contrast with the, the green line being up at the top. Um, and as we started to make service changes and we started to address you know, uh, adding in additional trips and changing run times, we saw that um, customer service grade go back up. But then again, we saw a little bit of a dip with the reliability going down a little bit. But then as the service rebounded, as we made changes in our September 2019 service change this past uh, fall, we saw then the customer service grade go up the uh, safety grade go up and the reliability improve as well. Another route, um, our CityLink Red, this is our, our heavy hauler, if you would. This is our highest ridership route um, of the entire system. Um, and it's got the best level of service of all, all core bus routes. So it is a beast to manage. Um, but again, it's something else that we can see the improvement um, over time. So, you know, reliability continues to rise um, essentially from a, a D E to a B minus, and same same thing applies. Looking at you know September, October, November, and December, um, and comparing it over the past years, we do see that upward trend. But it's also where it started to where it ended, um, to the point where we're you know in the in the B range now when it comes to the reliability of the service. Um, this is just something else to note. You know when it comes to safety and overcrowding, um, because there's so much service, there is a chance that we are cutting service on this line. So. We always like to monitor and see how, you know, where that grade is fluctuating. And if we have to add new service, modify service, um, you know, and add new trips to make sure that our safety is within a, a proper threshold. The local link 80 is another route that we've seen improvements on. But again, that whole relationship with customer service. 
Um, so the reliability has increased from a D to a B with numerous tweaks to run times and time bands. Um, so we see, you know, back in September 2018, we saw a little bit of improvement up to November, but then we see a much greater improvement from this past September to this past November, um, you know, with, with great improvement in our reliability of our service. We also saw rebounding of, um, uh, of the uh, safety measure with the overcrowded trips. But same thing with the City Link Lime example. You know, when we have dips in OTP, we got a lot of complaints. This also corresponds with the overcrowding. Um, when that subsides and we and overcrowding decreases and reliability improves, we saw the measure go back up. But then again, when it dips back down, we see, you know, again, the complaints from, from our riders, rightfully so. And then when the service improves, we saw that um, complaints grade uh, get better. So the 63, the local link 63 is a is an interesting example. This is one of our newer routes. It's our newest uh, route in the um, Baltimore Link family, if you would. Um, and this was started because of a major job center that opened up back in February of 2018. So you're not seeing the full date on this graph, um, but this is one where you know we need to provide service to a major job center. I mean, we're talking anywhere between 40,000 to you know 80,000 jobs. Um, that are either online or coming online, and they it happens essentially weekly and monthly with new shifts at this location. So when we're looking at this in the beginning, August 2019, our efficiency measure was fairly low, and that's not you know terrible. We have limited resources like many other trans agencies, and you know we have to efficiently um, provide our service where it's needed. So um, the safety measure, you know, we're seeing good levels of safety but then the efficiency is low. So as um, Trade Point Atlantic's, um, you know, as the job center started to expand, we saw that this, the efficiency was improving, which is good, but then we saw dips in our um, safety. So we had overcrowded service. Um, and then as we started to add new trips in, in you know, February and then in June of 2019, um, and again in September, we were able to see that, you know, it kind of rebounded, um, but then, the efficiency grade starts to go down when the uh, safety grade uh, continue or rises. So it's just a relationship that we see. Again, this is just part of the picture that we use when, when monitoring the service, but it's important to look at these external factors and things that are out of our control, like you know, jobs, uh, job centers opening up um, that doesn't kind of fall in line with our timelines for our service changes. So overall, how are we doing? You know, that's really the question that I've always get, I, I always get asked by, you know, riders, by the public, by um, the executive level folks. Um, well, overall, our core bus grade continues to improve. September 2018, we were a solid C student, you know, uh, 2.93. But as we started to make changes, as we started to really get into the minutia of the routes, we saw that the grade starts to slowly um, increase. So by the middle of last year, we were a 3.2, a solid B. Um, this past October, 3.23, still incremental improvements, but still getting better, up to the point where this past November and December, um, we were a solid B+. Plus. So to go from a C to a B plus in a matter of a year with service changes and with improvements in the scheduling process really, really shows you know, how beneficial a performance monitoring program can do when you track this stuff. Because with a system of 65 routes like we have, you know, we just have to do this one bite at a time. We can't be you know, making these sweeping changes and think that everything's going to be great. So the future of the program, I mean, we're not done. Uh, the performance monitoring and the route report cards are just a tool in the toolbox. Uh, like I've said, and like Jeremy's mentioned, it does not provide all the answers, but at least it's a good uh, snapshot and a good focus of what we need to do in the Office of Service Development to improve the system. So, you know, there's been discussion about adding additional information to the report cards or even additional report cards, for, for example, for our operations, um, looking at things such as equity planning and what routes, you know, serve Title VI populations, other operational information um, to have a bigger picture. Um, operator information, um, if that's having an impact on service, uh, service delivery, such as cut trips or even service impacts outside of our control, such as incidents and construction delays, but still things that we can't schedule for. We can add more runtime, we can add more layover and recovery, but if we add more runtime, for example, we can be then running early, and that's even worse than running late. So we really have to take this approach into you know, diving, uh, you know, diving in and using that um, scalpel approach to really make these changes 
Um, but yeah, this is just the beginning and we're looking forward to continuing this program and continuing to improve the, um, the M.MTA Baltimore Link system. Okay, fantastic. That was really great. Um, both of you, thanks so much. We have uh, had a lot of questions come in and um, there's a lot of content in there. So unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to aggregate between a couple of the questions that have come in. Um, hopefully this is something that uh, people are, are interested in and I'm hoping that you, uh, yeah, your contact information is there. So I think if folks have questions that are um, not addressed, you might try to reach out to these two individually and, and see if they can follow up. Um, so there were a couple of questions about uh, updates, both in terms of, um, so there was a response about the fall, summer, spring, and major service updates that are done every year, um, or do you do that every year, I guess, and if not, um, how do you know which type of updates to do when? And then even more broadly speaking, um, there were some questions about updating individual variables. So how do you account for um, you know, new line items that you might want to address? How, how flexible is the program in doing so? No, these are, these are all good questions and things that we, you know, we're working on um, when it comes to the updates to the program. But the, the first question and the first kind of uh, set is, um, with regards to service changes. So um, with the annual service planning um, process in the calendar, um, you know, that involves public hearings and, you know, it's, it's, it's very time consuming to be putting this stuff together and we wanna make sure that we're doing it right. So um, we established this, this process where we have only one major service change a year and that in, includes things like having public hearings. So those are route, major route changes, um, those are changing um, a route, uh, increasing service by more than 20% of the route's revenue hours or miles, um, changing bus stops more than a mile, uh, you know, that would force somebody to travel more than a mile away. But I think the big one is the increases or decreases in the level of service and the route alignments. And again, that happens, um, you know, once a year during our fall service change, which happens right after Labor Day. Um, and we're planning for that right now. I mean, that's an annual process that we start doing the um, the research and looking at the trends and start having a list, talking to uh, our partners, both internally and externally, seeing, you know, talking to our operators, seeing what needs to be done. And we're working on that process now, um, even though it's going to happen in fall of, of uh, 2020, uh, this upcoming fall. So um, that's something that we do, but there are two other service changes a year. Um, we have them again in uh, February, the one that we just had, and in June. Um, the, the basis of that is really uh, based on our CBA, but also when we take out our supplemental service school trippers. So that's why we have the service change in June and, and in September to take them out and put them back in for the summer. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's been the discussion all along that we want to make these tweaks to the system. Um, I mean, we can make them three times a year, but for the major route realignment changes, we just do that every fall. And then with regards to the um, question about having additional grades, if you would, or different measures, if I'm getting that right. Um, that's really the discussion we're having. We really wanted to establish the foundation for what we can um, we can control in the Office of Service Development. Um, and, you know, like we were talking about with on-time performance, you know, we look at the schedule performance because, you know, for our OTP, if a route, if a bus goes off route and it comes back on 30 minutes later on route, it could be 30 minutes late, but then the remaining time points, if it's 30 minutes late, that factors in. We don't want that to factor into our reliability because that's something that's out of our control. Um, we have other, we have a whole um, guidebook, uh, performance monitoring, bus service guidelines, and our bus stop design guide that really is um, kind of giving us the pathway to make changes that are sustainable, that are equitable, that are you know efficient. Um, and not just doing stuff based on either requests from people or just doing stuff that we don't have the data to make sure it's going to be successful. Excellent. Well, unfortunately, we are over time, so I will have to leave it there and say thank you all for your participation. Again, we will be posting today's slides on our website, and I'm sure if you wanted to follow up with uh, Thomas and Jeremy, they would probably be able to provide you some more information if your questions were not answered. Eno is planning to stay engaged in this larger issue, including through some research that we're doing with Foursquare right now on bus network redesigns and new mobility. 
Later this month, we'll be hosting a webinar on our forthcoming research report, Data on Demand, a case study in the Los Angeles and Puget, Sounds, uh, Puget Sound regions. Um, the date on that is to be determined, but keep an eye out for that. I also want to encourage everybody to subscribe to Eno Transportation Weekly, an invaluable resource on all aspects of transportation policy and practice. Once again, my thank you for your participation and have a great afternoon.